Okay, so before I get started, um, the night before I record this, I actually decided to uh, surf around the uh, Flat Earth Society wiki. Uh, again, I'm not a Flat Earther, I'm just interested in looking into their community from an outside perspective. Anyway, um, looking through this wiki page by page, I would have to say is a rabbit hole experience in one of its truest forms. I, I, I mean, obviously I was well aware that um, a lot of the stuff I was reading was very easily refutable. Um, there's one little experiment that I would like to uh, look further into before drawing conclusions, but yeah. Uh, even so, just looking at every little goddamn thing, my... <laughs> It was a very surreal, brain-melting experience. Um, in fact, uh, sometime uh, in the near future, um, at least after uh, doing other stuff uh, unrelated to Flat Earthers, of course, um, I actually want to record a uh, tour of this wiki, you know, like a virtual tour. Um, but anyway, um, this is... Uh, this is an essay um, from a member of the Flat Earth Society. Um, this time I, I actually managed to... So this time it should be an essay from an actual Flat Earther, which is what I thought my last narration was, but turns out it was a section of uh, a book on uh, various uh, conspiracy theory communities. All right. So, without further ado, here we go. The Earth is flat. This is a belief I hold as the beginning of an ongoing search for truth and certainty. It is a starting point, an intellectual foundation on which I feel further knowledge can soundly be built, much as Descartes did in his Meditations on First Philosophy. I wish to start from a place of certainty and build upon it. The flat earth is an obvious truth to me now. My senses show me, and my reason confirms it. However, my belief that the earth is flat is not a popular one, and it's, and it's not a belief I have always held. Like most people, I was taught from an early age that the earth is a rooting sphere which, along with a collection of other spherical bodies, revolves an elliptical orbit around our sun. To most of you, this will seem like an obvious and unarguable fact. It is something you have been told by teachers, told by parents, told by textbooks. It is something you are utterly sure of, and more than likely, it is something you have never truly investigated. It isn't surprising, then, that people believe so strongly that the Earth is a sphere. We are bombarded every day of our lives with information, television, radio, books, and the internet, all complete all compete to tell us things. Society agrees that some ideas are worth debating and that others are not. The idea of a spherical Earth falls into that second category. At some point, our society decided with great certainty that the Earth is a sphere and, consequently, that further consideration is unnecessary and anyone holding an opposing viewpoint is unworthy of debate. That the Earth is spherical is a fact, and we are from an early age told to accept it without question and in the face of our own first hand experience. But as the 16th uh, century mathematician Pierre Simon Le Presse stated, uh, the weight of evidence for an extraordinary claim must be proportioned to its strangeness. The spherical Earth model is truly extraordinary and runs contrary to all of our senses. Consequently, the burden of proof is extraordinary, and this burden has never been met. But because the idea is so firmly ingrained into our culture, few of us bother to hold the spherical Earth model to account. This tendency to firmly maintain beliefs while intentionally disregarding opposing evidence particularly evidence in the form of first-hand experience, is intellectually dishonest and unscientific. Man's quest for truth is furthered only through experience and reason, 
During the 19th century, Samuel Burley Robotham pioneered an approach to astronomy called Zetetic Astronomy. Zeteticism stresses the appointments of importance of reason and experience over the trusting acceptance of dogma. This emphasis on experience as the only source of true knowledge dates back to ancient Greek empiricists such as Aristotle and was also prominent in more recent British empiricism espoused by John Locke. In his An Essay Concerning Human Understanding, Locke states, No man's knowledge can go beyond his experience. While secondhand knowledge is often a useful tool for dealing with practical day-to-day -day tasks, it should not be mistaken for truth and certainty. Empiricism forms the foundation of the scientific method, a tremendously useful tool for learning about the world, one of the scientific method's greatest strengths when it is practiced honestly and sincerely, is its willingness to engage in opposing data. In the preface of his book, Satetic Astronomy, Earth is Not a Globe, Robotham makes the satetic dedication to his principle clear. I advise all my readers who have become satetic not to look with disfavor upon the objections of their opponents. Should such objections be well or even plausibly founded, they will only tend to free us from error and to purify and exalt our satetic philosophy. In a word, let us make friends, or at least friendly and useful instruments of our enemies. And if we cannot convert them to a better cause, let us carefully examine their objections, fairly meet them if possible, and always make use of them as beacons for future guidance. Despite its frequent criticism from mainstream sites, the satetic approach to science is happy to take on board objections from its opponents because those objections will ultimately be used to strengthen the flat earth position. The modern flat earth society has its roots in satetic astronomy. After Robotham's staff in 1884, his followers formed the Universal Satetic Society and continued to publish satetic literature in the spirit of Robotham's satetic astronomy, Earth is not a globe. In 1956, the Universal Satetic Society became the Flat Earth Society. While the society's focus became more religious throughout the 20th century, the satetic underpinnings remained intact. In the 21st century, the Flat Earth Society is returning to its original scientific focus and, despite its presently diminished size, is stronger than ever. We are patient because we know that the truth will ultimately be realized. Again, from Robotham's preface to the tech astronomy, Earth is not a globe. In all directions, there is so much truth in our favor that we can well afford to be dainty in our selection and magnanimous and charitable towards those who simply believe but cannot prove that we are wrong. We need not seize upon very crude and ill-developed result which offers or only seems to offer the slightest chance of becoming evidence in our favor, as every theorist is obligated to do if he were to have his theory clothed and fit to be seen. We can afford to patiently wait, carefully weigh, and well consider very every point advanced, in the full assurance that simple truth, and not the mere opinions of men, is destined sooner or later to have a sensi. In Verite Victoria, Daniel Shenton, The Flatterous Society.